Hi, my name is Dan Elder from Kidasa Software. Welcome to this video about importing from project using our built-in template, modifying that schedule, saving it as a custom template, and then importing a different file using that custom template. To get started, let's go to the Connections tab and click on Create Report from Project. Unless you're using Project Server, in which case you would click on Create Report from Project Server. Since I just have an MPP file, I'm going to click on Create Report from Project. I'm going to choose the first file that I'm importing, this Death Star example. Press Open. It kind of opens up your MPP file in the background. And now I'm going to use a built-in template. So I'm just going to make sure I don't have a flag field set. Um, that is one way to limit what you import. Um, you can set up a flag field and set each task to yes or no uh, if you want to limit what you import. Um, and I'm also going to have unique ID for the tag. And then I'm going to choose use a built-in template. I'm going to press next. And for this one, I'm just going to choose a Gantt uh, category and basic Gantt type. But you can see there's lots of different categories uh, that you could kind of explore. And for each type, there's a little button in the bottom left about this format that kind of explains what gets imported with that format. OK, so I'm going to press Next here. At any point, you could press Finish if you want to just skip the next option screens and kind of use the default. I'm going to press Next. Uh, I'm not going to change any of these options, but uh, for example, the summary bars, you can choose whether to bring in the bars directly from project or to just have milestones draw them automatically based on the subtasks. Um, we have some additional checkboxes here, and if you have any questions about those, uh, there's always going to be a help button kind of in the bottom left, and that kind of explains you know, exactly what these options do, so you can check those out if you're interested. I'm going to press Next. Uh, you could enter a title here. Um, I've already got a title um, that I must have typed earlier. Um, you can always edit this title after you import as well. I'm going to press Next. This is where symbol text gets chosen. So in this example, I've got uh, the finish symbol uh, bringing in the name field to line one. Uh, you can have up to three lines of symbol text. Um, I've just got the name field on line one, so the name of the project task is going to appear right over the finish symbol. Um, a common mistake I sometimes see is uh, you have the name field on the start symbol and the name field on the finish symbol. So if you're bringing in a Gantt bar, uh, you're going to end up with double text, which is kind of annoying. So just kind of keep that in mind. See what uh, symbol text is chosen here, what fields are chosen for the symbol text and so on. I'm not going to bring in any symbol notes, so I'm just going to leave those as none. And I'm going to press Next. On this screen, you can change the layout of your schedule. Um, I'm just going to make it a little bit wider, just for presentation purposes. Uh, but if you are going to be printing it, you'll probably just want to pick whatever paper size you're actually going to be printing on, um, just to make it a little easier on yourself later. I'm going to press Next. And you can choose a color theme if you want to. Um, I'm just going to leave it with whatever this default kind of color theme is. And I can change the color theme after I import as well. So I'm going to press Finish. And you can kind of see in the bottom left, it kind of goes through a little import process telling you what tasks are being imported. And now it says Import Complete. I can press OK. So I've imported my schedule, and now I'm going to make some modifications to the schedule. Um, the first thing I'll do is maybe change the color theme. So if I go to the Format tab, um, you've got your default color themes kind of over here on the left, including any custom color themes uh, that you've saved. Um, let's see, you can just kind of go through here. If you just want to pick a color theme, you can just click on it. Um, just kind of go through and see all of our different color theme options. I'll probably just start with autumn. Um, it's a nice simple kind of color theme. Um, another thing I might want to change is the symbol size. Um, if I kind of zoom in using control and my mouse wheel, um, you can see those symbols are 
uh, pretty small, especially for this size uh, schedule. Maybe I'll make them a little bit bigger. The default symbol size is going to be in the Format tab in the bottom right, the little Symbol Size button. And so right now it's using a custom uh, symbol size. If I click on Custom, you can see it's 0.6. Uh, the default size is 1.0. Um, so maybe I'll just click on Symbol Size and kind of, let's see, that's 0.75, 1.0. Yeah, maybe 1.0. Uh, looks pretty good for now. And I'm going to make two more changes. I'm going to change uh, these symbols. Uh, if I make these triangles invisible symbols, uh, then these yellow bars are going to look like um, just bars by themselves. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to double click on this start symbol on the um, toolbox. And I'm going to change the shape from 48, which is that kind of yellow triangle to 28, which is an invisible symbol. I click on 28, and once I press OK, it's going to affect all of these symbols on the schedule that are using that spot in the toolbox. I'm going to press OK, and you can see that symbol kind of disappeared right there. Uh, we've also got the finish symbol, so I'm going to make a couple changes to the finish symbol. I'm going to uh, make it invisible by changing it to 28. And then I'm also going to make the text uh, be to the right of this bar. Then I can kind of shrink down the schedule because um, each bar is going to take up less room. Um, so I'm going to double click on this finish symbol on the uh, toolbox. And first I'm going to change the shape to 28, which is that invisible symbol. And then I'm going to go to text and date properties. And right now it's above and in the center, so you can see the text is above uh, that symbol and kind of centered. So if I click on right, then the text would go to the right. And if I click on middle for the vertical placement, then it should be just to the right of that bar um, or that finish symbol right there. So if I click OK, so now all the text is kind of to the right of the bars, and that looks pretty good. Um, if I had longer tasks, you know, I could put it to the right of the start symbol and then kind of put the text, you know, over the bar or in the bar and so on. Uh, but I'll just leave it like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, and then that looks pretty good. I'm going to change the, um, the layout. If I go to the layout tab, um, you can see the default rows per page for this import uh, was 11. Uh, if I want to make it a little more condensed, I can change this to maybe 20 rows per page and press Apply Setting Changes. That looks pretty good. And um, I think that's going to be all of the changes um, that I'm going to make for this um, custom template. So now that I've made the changes, um, if I want to save this as just a regular schedule, um, like if I want to, uh, you know, use the schedule and uh, uh, have it later and print it out and modify it and stuff like that, using this information, I would just go to Save As and choose Chart. Um, so that's just going to save your Milestones professional, you know, chart or schedule, um, just as a normal uh, file. So I can just yeah, keep a Death Star project. Um, so that's just going to be a regular. Um, milestone schedule you can open later. Uh, you can't use that to uh, import or anything like that. If you want to save a custom import template, um, you actually go to Save As and you choose Microsoft Project Custom Import Template. And what that does is that allows you to use that file to import later. And you could import different MPP files uh, kind of using. Um, this format, it's going to be the basic Gantt format, but it's also going to have all the changes that you have applied um, to this schedule. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So Microsoft Project Custom Import Template, you'll File, Save As, choose that Microsoft Project Custom Import Template. Uh, it asks for a description. Um, I'll just say like Death Star Template, maybe, and press OK. And you'll probably want to label this um, like template or something like that, um, just so you remember that this is actually 
a template file uh, for you to use as a template later. Um, okay, so I've got that template all saved. Now we can import using that template. So to import using the template, it's the same process as using a built-in template. Um, you just choose a different option. So I'm going to go Connections, Create Report from Project. I'm going to choose a different file, uh, just as an example, the small project.mpp. Press Open. It should kind of open it in the background there. And give me that same import options screen. Um, so instead of use a built-in template, I'm going to say start with a custom template and press next. And if you recently saved the file um, on your computer, it should kind of have this kind of pre-selected. If you've got other ones that you saved, uh, you can kind of see them in the drop down. Uh, but if you recently saved it using that file, save as, Microsoft Project Custom Import Template, it should kind of show up here by default. So it kind of shows a preview down here of what the file looked like. Um, in this case, the, uh, the rows are kind of messed up for some reason. But here you can choose the symbol text. So if I wanted to use the start symbol instead of the finish symbol uh, for a field, I could do that here. I'll bring in that name field. Um, on the start uh, instead of the finish. And then pretty much the only other option you can choose is you know whether you want project summary bars or milestone summary bars. Um, and once you press next, um, you could enter a title um, or you can take the title from the custom template. I'll just say uh, it's a small project. And that's pretty much it. So once I press finish, um, you can see I can't press next and choose any other options. Um, once I press finish, it's going to use pretty much all those other options that I've already chosen uh, when I initially imported it and then kind of when I redesigned it. So you can see it says import complete. So it used that, um, that same template that I modified. Um, obviously, it updated the date range to encompass whatever I just imported. Um, but you can see it put the name field on the start symbol instead of the finish symbol um, and it kept the color theme and all that. So that's pretty much how you import using a Microsoft Project uh, custom import template. Um, the first step is to import using a built-in template. Then you can make changes, uh, any kind of formatting or layout changes you want. And then you do file, save as, Microsoft Project custom import template and then you can import using that template uh, later on if you'd like to. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video about importing from Microsoft Project using a custom template. If you have any questions, uh, you can email support at kidasa.com. Uh, don't forget to visit our website at kidasa.com and have a nice day.